Isaiah 61 and verse 1 begins like this. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. And I think the point that the pastor here wants to make, uh, Imad, is that there you have in this verse, again, three beings or three persons separate from one another who is all involved in, in, in this verse. So let's listen to what Pastor Boy has to say and then look at it closely. Notice Isaiah 61 and verse 1. Here it comes out even more clearly. Isaiah 61 and verse 1. I want you to see in this verse that you have three persons. By the way, this is the verse with which Jesus began his ministry in Nazareth. You can find it in Luke chapter 4. The Spirit, there you have one, of the Lord God, there you have two, is upon me. Did you catch that? Once again, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, and this is a messianic prophecy, because the Lord has anointed me, see the distinction between Lord and me? The Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. So you have three individuals here, the Spirit, the Lord God, and me, which is referring to the Messiah. This is, this is a, a, a perfect example of eisegesis where where you're reading something into the text that is not there it's not exegesis it's eisegesis you're inserting your own ideas into it no hebrew no israelite would have ever read this text and understood it the way pastor bohr have explained it it's so detached from reality and the context i mean it's 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 out there right it's a messianic prophecy pointing to the messiah being anointed with the spirit of the Lord. There are two persons being spoken about in here. Let me share the screen. There is, uh, 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 there is the Lord God and me, which is the Messiah, right? The spirit of the Lord God is upon me, right? I will, I will, I will comment on it uh, soon. But notice the overarching idea that comes from Isaiah. Notice what we read in chapter 11 and verse 1. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his root. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord, and shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. Okay, so the spirit of God will be upon this Messiah. In chapter 42 and verse 1, Behold my servant whom I uphold, mine elect in whom my soul delighteth. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. It's, it's all messianic prophecies talking about the same Messiah, referring to the same time, describing the same event of, of the Messiah being anointed with the spirit of God. That is what we read in Isaiah 61 that uh, Pastor Bo referred to, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. That's what in Isaiah 42, God says, I have put my spirit upon him, right? This was fulfilled with the, when Jesus was baptized, the spirit of God came upon him. And if you remember uh, straight away, he came out of the water. He went into the wilderness and was tempted. And then when he came straight away, when he came from the wilderness, he reads, those words in, in Luke chapter 4, <clears throat> verse 21, which again Pastor Bo referred to, and he began to say unto them, after he read this prophecy from Isaiah 61, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, and Jesus says, this day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. What Jesus is telling them, the scripture, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, is fulfilled in front of you because I received the Spirit of the Lord God. <clears throat> right now john the baptist god never told him what the messiah will look like notice the description in verse 32 onward and john bear record saying i saw the spirit descending from heaven like a dove and it abode upon him and i knew him not 
But he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same is he which baptized with the Holy Ghost. And I saw on bare record that this is the Son of God. So John was never told what the Messiah would look like, but he knew that that prophecy, when that prophecy is fulfilled, when the Spirit of God is rests upon that man, that will be mm -hmm. the Messiah, right? Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending, right? And, and uh, in John chapter 3, you read it in the previous episode in verse 34, for he whom God has sent speaketh the words of God, for God giveth not the spirit by measure upon him. The, the prophecy, the messianic prophecy that Pastor Paul referred to, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me, has nothing to do with the Trinity. The spirit of the Lord God, you don't have two beings there. You don't have two persons there. You have one person giving his spirit, as we read in Isaiah 42, I believe it was, I will put my spirit. Now listen, uh, no one reading the scriptures without a preconceived idea will read the words, my spirit, and will understand the words, my spirit, to refer to another person called God, the Holy Spirit. I mean, it's it, it just... It's just not logical. Come on, people. Let's let's just be reasonable with the scriptures. I mean, my spirit is my spirit. No one, especially from the denomination where this pastor, Pastor Bohr, come, comes from, no one will believe that the spirit of a person is a separate entity than that person themselves. Nobody, right? I mean, the scriptures is clear. If you look at, for example, uh, uh, Daniel chapter 2, and verse 1, in the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar dreamed dreams wherewith his spirit was troubled. Who was troubled? It was Nebuchadnezzar himself. His, troubled, his spirit was troubled and his sleep went from him. Uh, I won't refer to the verse in Luke chapter 8, verse 54 and 55, when Jesus raised uh, uh, Jairus' daughter, right? Uh, he says... Uh, uh, made arise tabitha kumi and the bible says and her spirit came again what came into her it's her spirit it's her life so again nobody nobody reading those words with an open and honest mind in isaiah chapter 61 and verse 1 the spirit of the lord god is upon me will understand to have the spirit is one person the Lord God is another person, and me is a third person. That is, that, that, that is uh, so, uh, sorry, I didn't have the screen shared. That, that, that is so out there. It's, it's not funny anymore. Here it is. The spirit is one person. The Lord God is another person. Me is another person. You just can't read it that way. The spirit of the Lord God describes the spirit of God. It, it's not a rocket science. It's not complicated. The spirit of the Lord God is the spirit of God. Is upon me. Me is the Messiah. What the Messiah is saying is that the spirit of God is upon me, just like what we read in Isaiah 42 and verse 1. I, God is speaking, I have put my spirit upon him. My spirit that God is speaking is not another being. God didn't say, I have put my friend upon him. No, no, no. I have put my spirit upon him. So there is no trinity there. There are no three persons there. It's just a, 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 a godly man trying to insert his own preconceived ideas, which are wrong, into the scriptures. That's not right. We should never do that. Anyway, I'll leave it at that. No, I agree that this, again, when, when I heard it, I was a bit taken aback because what you see was, and the spirit of the Lord God, that is one, that is clear. I mean, I, I couldn't see how, how the pastor could just say, for instance, and the spirit one of the Lord it just didn't make another one. And then me, obviously the me, yes, that is another one, but just that, that first one, splitting it up. Maybe just for... Um, 
purposes of, 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 of clarity in terms of the spirit of, of the Lord God who was upon Jesus Christ. It is 2 Corinthians 5.19 that says, God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. We, we've used this verse many a time in our studies in the past. Um, and um, it, yes, it, said, it, it says um, God was in Christ. Now, I, I want to, I'm going to make a point here. Ephesians 2 and verse 18. Ephesians 2 verse 18. Ephesians 2 and verse 18. I'm just waiting for it to appear. Okay, there we go. For through him, we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. So I, I, I want to look at this, this idea quickly as we close this thought. It says here that we, both you and I, Imad, we have access by one spirit unto the Father. Now, if you go to um, chapter 3 and verse 12, I want to see that access. How are we able to access the Father? We know what Jesus said um, while, while speaking to, I think it was Thomas who asked him, show us the way. He said, I'm the way to mm -hmm. the Father. No one comes to the Father. But this access, so it says here, in whom, talking about Jesus Christ, the previous verse, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by faith. Um, can you just scroll it down a little bit, Imad? Is it, is it to God? Because I can't see that part or up. I think you, you, because I think maybe I should just move this. It's fine. All right. So I'll read it again. Sorry. It says, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by faith of him. So this access, this access can't be talking about Jesus Christ himself. It's, it's talking about access to God. So the access to the Father. So it's this access. We, we access by one spirit. We access by Christ. It is, it is very clear that the spirit of God that is in Christ Jesus, that is reconciling the world to himself, is giving us the ability to access the Father. It's the way by which we come to the Father, and none other than through Jesus Christ. So, again, just a study here as to the spirit that rested on Jesus Christ. What did it make? possible it made possible that we have access to the father through jesus christ that, so yes. yes yeah look that, that, that is true and another verse came to my mind going back uh, to um the reference you know or people uh saying the spirit of the lord god the spirit is one the lord god is another and and so forth um allow me just to read this verse from job 26 and probably we we can uh, leave it at that um, notice what it says he divided the sea with his power and mm -hmm. by his understanding he smarteth through the proud by his spirit he hath garnished the heavens his hands has formed the crooked serpent all these things belong to God it is his spirit it is his hand it is his power it's his understanding to, to, to isolate this his his spirit and make it a separate person other than God the Father. It's well, now you have God the Father and his spirit is another being called God the Holy Spirit who is the friend of God, who is co-eternal with God. And, and I mean, come on, you, you can't do that. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. God has anointed me with his spirit. I will put my spirit upon him, God is saying. It is, it's very basic, simple English language. Uh, we don't need to complicate it. We don't need to insert yeah. our own understanding in it. Everyone, including Pastor Stephen Bohr, would agree that every human being that lived at the days of the old covenant before Jesus came, at the days of Jesus, none of them worshipped a trinity. Hence, all those who read these Hebrew scriptures, who understood Hebrew language better than me or any concordance could, right? Or, or better than Pastor Bohr, with all due respect, none of them read a trinity into it. Let us just leave it at that. Let us respect the Hebrew language as the Hebrew people saw it and still see it, right? It's, it's very simple.